Did you know that even if an admin completely blocks access to graph PowerShell in their tenant, like I've done in this one, there are ways to get around it and still be able to call commands like this. In this video, we are going to look at how and why it's possible, and we're going to do a deep dive into access tokens. Now, before we go any further, my main goal with these videos is to teach you to become a better Microsoft 365 admin. I want you to better understand Microsoft Graph and where it sits in the Microsoft ecosystem because it's really important as you design your conditional access policies and other security measures to protect your tenant. Okay, so let's start with how all of this works. So let's take a user who's opening a browser window to access Teams. Now what you need to remember is that Teams and the rest of Microsoft 365, even uh, Entra users, Intune, uh, let's say SharePoint and OneDrive, they are all accessed through Microsoft Graph. Right? So, so all of these services that come under Microsoft 365, they're all a common endpoint for all of them is Microsoft Graph. And so there is a single endpoint, and that's how you get to Microsoft Graph. So when the user opens up Teams, whether it's from the browser or from the app, the app would then call into Microsoft Graph to go and pull down all of the information from Microsoft 365 to show like the groups the user belongs to, the chat messages, and so on. And the Graph endpoint will check if the user is coming in with what's called a token, which identifies who the user is. Now, if they're not signed in, they wouldn't have the token. And the graph endpoint would tell them, hey, come back with a valid token. So that's when the user will get redirected to Entra to do the sign-in, right? So that will be Microsoft Entra. And the browse session will get redirected. The user goes into Microsoft Entra. There'll be the whole login page and the sign-in flow. And once that's done, the token will be sent back. And that's called the access token. And that access token will be sent back to the user. And then the browser takes that token and sends it to Graph API, checks the token and says, okay, you can call into Teams with this and it'll send the data back. To so that's a quick overview of how the access token plays an important part in being able to get to the data that you want. So this access token is valid for one hour. Now what someone can do is open up PowerShell, take this token, put it into that PowerShell session, and then make calls to Graph API from that PowerShell session. And this token gives them access to all of the same APIs that were granted to the Teams app. And because these web calls are simple HTTP web request calls, they can be mimicked to look just like they're coming from Teams and the graph endpoint will have no way to distinguish between them. So now let's dig in and see how this works. So I opened up a new browser session and I'm going to go to Teams and open it up. Now you can see what's happened, the first part, which is the user tries to access Teams and Teams says that you're not logged in, so I'm going to send you back to Entra ID to do the sign-in. So we are here now at Entra and we see the sign-in page. Now to see what's happening behind the scenes and to be able to see the access token, I'm going to press F12 so you can open up the network tab and be able to follow the flow. So let's sign in as John. Do the MFA. Right, so now the user is signed in, went to Entra, and then he's able to access the Teams application. So that that's basically, we went in, we went to Entra, did the sign-in, got the access token from Microsoft Entra, came back with the token, and then we presented it to Graph, and then when we were able to get all of the Teams information like we've seen here. So if you come to this filter view in the network tab and search for token, you'll see there'll be a bunch of token requests, right? And if you click on that and then go to the response, you'll be able to see the actual token that was returned. 
Now you'll need to click through these to find the one that has the word email, open ID, profile, and the key is graph.microsoft.com. So this is the scope of the tokens, right? And you can see that a bunch of tokens, access token, refresh token, there's an expiry, there's an ID token. Uh, we'll look at all these tokens another day, but today what we're going to look at is the access token. So here you see the access token. And if you go right to the end, you can copy that access token, right? So now I've copied that access token. And if you open up a tool called jot.ms, jwt.ms, you can actually paste that token in here and be able to decode and see all the information about the token. Now you need to be really careful with these tokens, where you paste them in which browser, because anyone who has access to this will have access to a lot of information. So you can see this token has a scope and it says it can call into all of these different graph permissions that have been granted in this claim, right? So you can see files.readwrite, group.readall. So whatever the user John has access to, all those teams, sites, and SharePoint sites, um, and his own email and other things, he'll be able to access them using this access token, right? And you'll see the name of the user, uh, who he has, who he is, and uh, other information like the tenant IP address and so on. Now, what this scope highlights is that using this access token, you can call any of the APIs that are behind these permission scopes. Now, if you want to know which APIs and which PowerShell commands are available for a permission scope, I have a neat site that I've created. Um, if you go to graphpermissions.merrill.net, you'll be able to look up based on the permission. So if I like paste that permission in, you'll be able to click through and view all of the APIs that are available for that permission. You can also see the PowerShell commands. So I include all the PowerShell commands and the beta versions of those commands for that permission. So using that access token, you'll be able to call into any of these, right? So I've copied the access token here. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go into PowerShell and I'm going to put the token into the PowerShell session so I can then call into Graph API, uh, assign it to a token variable and I'm going to say, read it from the host and read it as a secure string. And I'm just going to paste the token into that variable. Now, all I need to do is say connect graph and I can say, use the access token that I provided. So you can see I'm not connecting with the username or the password. I can simply pass the access token that's already available and put that in. Right, so now that I've put the token in, you can see I have an access session. It's user provided access token that it's using. And now we'll be able to call any of the commands that were in scope for that access token. So I can say, get me all the users, get me a list of all the groups in this tenant. And I can see the groups as well and be able to make changes to the sites that I have access to. So what did we learn today? We learned that all of the apps in Microsoft 365 have a common endpoint called Microsoft Graph. And when you are given a, an access token, it has permission scopes that define what you can do with that token for the different resources that are behind Microsoft Graph. Now, when you go and define a conditional access policy, you won't see Microsoft Graph as an app that you can target in conditional access, simply because all of Microsoft 365 and even Entra itself, all the users, if you block access to Microsoft Graph, you basically cannot do anything. So Graph and Microsoft 365 and Entra all, all tied in together. And it is the permission scopes that define what the person can do. So when you create a conditional access policy, one really important policy to have is a baseline policy that targets all apps. That's going to be your minimum bar. So it could be MFA, that's the minimum bar for all apps, or it could be a compliant device. So that's the baseline policy that protects Microsoft Graph. So I hope you found this useful. And I have more videos that go into things like conditional access and Microsoft Graph in my channel. 
Um, I also run a weekly newsletter. If you want to stay on top of everything related to Entra, go to entra.news and sign up. Every week I send out a new update of everything that's happening in Microsoft Entra. And you'll also learn tips like what we saw today. For example, why you need to have a policy that targets all cloud. And, you know, it's done in a fun way. So subscribe today at entra.news. And if you have any questions, post them in the comments below.